Hey there guys, welcome back to my channel Crafty Concepts with Erin. I have a fun scrapbook layout for you today featuring the Good Vibes Collection. Now I've already cut into this so I'm missing a few of the pieces. They were all originally 12 by 12 um, but the only other sheet I'm missing is the other side. There's two of each pattern so that would be this one in this gorgeous shortbread pattern. So we're going to create a single page layout so let me clean this up and we'll get started. Let me bring in my Versamat and I also wanted to show you there is a 12 by 12 coordinating sticker sheet. It is so cute. They have kind of the shiny UV coating and tons of titles and just fun icons on here. And this is gonna be really fun to work with today. I'm going to use this glacier pattern paper as my base and we're going to create a frame style layout. So this white daisy is trimmed to 10 and 3 quarter inch square. And through the magic of editing, I have gutted that piece to save that for another project. I'm going to add a little espresso ink to the edge of my white card stock. And I do want to mention that this Good Vibes collection is part of the National Scrapbooking Day celebration. Close to my heart is having an online virtual crop. It's absolutely free. There's giveaways, exclusive product, and this is one of the collections that they brought out for that event. So there are pre-designed layouts that are fun and super fantastic, but I always like to do my own thing. But I'll leave that linked in the description box below so you guys can check that out. And if you want to partake in the, you know, virtual crop, I'll have the information for that as well. So I have all of these scraps. This is where the scraps come in. The largest scrap is two and a quarter by I think five inches long. And what I'm going to do is use my little Fiskars photo trimmer and cut these into triangle shapes. So I've measured the halfway point and I'm lining that up and then just going corner to that halfway mark to get my triangles. I'm actually following a workshop guide from Close to My Heart, and you guys can get this workshop guide for free. I'll leave that listed in the description box below, but it gives you all the measurements. I'm going to switch it up just a little bit, but for these triangle pieces, I did use those measurements provided in that guide, so you guys can grab that too. So be sure, check the description box below. If you guys don't know where that is, you can either click see more or the little arrow, and it'll open it all up, and there's tons of information and links in there very useful info so you can check that out. I just about have all my triangle pieces cut and then I will ink the edges of these as well and you'll see like that cute little camera pattern paper that has a lot of white on it. This one would kind of get lost against that white daisy background so this will help give it some definition and help it stand out. I'd like to give a shout out to fellow close to my heart maker, Paula Simmons. She created a layout with this Good Vibes collection and it was a surfer themed layout and it was really beautiful. And I thought, oh, this is absolutely perfect. What a good idea. The color palette and everything just is made for beach photos. So I dug through my collection and found these two photos of my husband and I from 2010. The finished photo size. I printed them together on one piece and it measures just about like five and an eighth by three and three quarters and that includes the white border. So I use an app called print size and I could put both the photos on one you know page and print them out as one unit. I actually have a video coming up very soon on my channel that goes into depth on how I print my photos, what I use, and the whole process that goes into that. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notifications so you will get the alert when that video posts. I matted my photos on espresso cardstock and just roughed up the edge to give it some texture. And now I'm going to create this like sunburst pattern with our triangles that we cut from our scraps. So I'm starting with one pattern paper and I'm creating a rough visual triangle. This makes it easy when you're doing this kind of layout to disperse your colors and patterns to make sure you have a very balanced look. So we don't want all of one color or one type of pattern concentrated in any one area. And of course, I'm just dry fitting these so I can move them around and, you know, make sure I'm happy with everything before I adhere them down. You'll see I'm flipping some of them over because I only inked one side and I had the wrong side of the pattern up. So I'm just kind of flipping and flopping them until I get everything just so. I also have some cardstock pieces. That is the glacier color. And the workshop guide shows that some of the pieces have a dovetail. It's not a very deep or sharp dovetail. So I'm just putting a tiny little, you know, bit of that into the end of some of the pieces. And then I'll grab my ink tool and finish that off. And I, again, I'm not doing all of them. I'm 
I'm just selectively going around again in that kind of visual triangle. Um, they tell you which ones to do, but I'm more or less just eyeballing it at this point. Close to My Heart actually used the As You Grow paper collection to create this workshop, which is a really pretty paper pack. You can find it in the core catalog, and what they did is created a workshop for both scrapbookers and card makers, so you can find that when you look at the specials tab under the As You Grow collections, you'll see the workshop guides. So it's kind of becoming funny because I use the perfectly imperfect patterns on I, just about every layout. Maybe not every layout, but it's almost like a joke. When is it going to make its way into the video? So here it is. This time I'm grabbing the kind of like little grid background and I chose Glacier Ink because I don't want this to be really bold. I want it to be subtle. So this is a lighter shade of ink and you're going to see me kind of fumbling. Yes, guys, I struggle. So I wanted to keep my little pieces of of paper and I thought I would just lift them up and then stamp around the edge so I knew where I wanted that and it was kind of you know I was struggling so I ended up deciding to glue down all of the inner corners just with a little bit of tape to tack those into place and that way I can lift up the corners you could just draw a rough pencil line or maybe just kind of casually stamp it in you know rotating the stamp as you go around but I didn't want like a solid wreath I just wanted little bits and pieces of it so it helped me to have my pattern paper in place so that I can see how I wanted that turned and where I wanted to put it down. So I definitely recommend you know gluing down the tips it made the process a lot easier. I know it's not picking up the stamping on camera very well, but in the end, I'll hold it up and you'll get to see what that looks like. And it looks pretty cool. So this is a zip strip. It's one of the branding strips off the pattern paper. And I kind of thought it looked like little waves going across the bottom of the paper. And I like that pop of the nectarine color. So I'm gonna adhere that just to kind of anchor my page here get that running across and I always have my stamp chamois and a little Tupperware to clean up my stamps as I go I don't have a very big workspace so I like to get clean as I go rather than make an epic mess and then find my way out of it at the end of the project the original layout had the title on the bottom there, but I think I like it better positioned over the top of the photo. And then I am totally scrap lifting Paula Simmons little cluster she used on her surfer layout with this little sticker that says noted and then the thumbs up and the high five sticker. I love the way she had those clustered together. So I am going to scrap lift that. And then I have this summer vibe scrapbooking stamp and thin cut set. And I love how they come all bundled together. They have a magnetic sheet to hold all those thin cuts in place and everything fits in this envelope perfectly. And then you also have the little foam piece to put under your you know, paper that you're stamping on. If you don't have the Versamat, this foam works to act as a cushion and give you a better impression. I'm going to stamp this cute little surfboard here in Glacier Ink, and then we'll get that stamped onto our White Daisy cardstock scrap here. Now this would be a fairly simple shape to fussy cut out, but we have the coordinating die, so I am going to use that. And let me get these open. I haven't even opened this stamp set yet. So I like to line those up. I'll hold it in place with a little post-it removable tape and then run that through my die cutting machine. Now I wanna add a little bit more character to this. So I grabbed the little wave pattern and I'm just inking up a portion of it because I really only want one of the swirly little waves. I'm throwing down a piece of scratch paper because I'm going to be stamping off the edge and we're just going to put a cool wave design on the top of our surfboard doesn't that look neat and then to finish this off I'll add a little ink around the edge and we're going to tuck this into our cluster I'm gonna have it just kind of peeking out the top just to bring in that he's boogie boarding but that's okay it works for me and then this is the buildable tags they do have a tag on the layout so I went ahead and cut that and they used it for journaling but I'm just going to use it for another em embellishment cluster I'm cutting that off and then we'll tuck it underneath here and I think they had theirs on the opposite side so I'm just again kind of switching it up to work with my layout and then this sticker says I've got sunshine so I'm going to layer that right over the bottom and then add a couple more stickers from the sticker sheet these cute little flowers maybe one up top maybe here yeah I like it there so the story behind these photos, we were actually visiting our friends in App 
Aptos. They have a beach house there and we were on the beach and my husband's a total cowboy. He's not a surf boy at all, but he gave it his best trying to catch a wave on that boogie board and it was hilarious. I was just cracking up the whole time. But on the way down to Aptos, the movie Avatar had just recently come out. So he's on the phone with his buddy and they obviously had asked, where are you going? He goes, oh, we're headed to Avatar. <laughs> so it became this huge joke and now we all call it Avatar. I decided to add my journaling underneath the photos and we have a couple different pattern papers going on and if I printed my journaling on transparency paper, it would have gotten lost against that background. So I opted for journaling strips. I printed them out on white daisy cardstock. If you guys haven't seen my 10 and a half ways to add journaling video yet, I highly recommend it. I share my favorite ways and kind of how I do it for adding journaling to my layouts and I'll leave that linked at the eye up in the upper right hand corner or in in the description box below so when you finish this video you can come back and check that out. In the journaling I just talked about how Mike my husband is trying his best to catch a wave and the whole event was pretty entertaining and we all had a really good laugh and then of course I included the date. There were a lot of other pictures and layouts that accompany this one so I had the whole avatar story on one of those and I didn't need to add it to this one as well. I'm adding a little piece of burlap to my tag and then I love to use twine to tie the ribbon into place. This is some twine I got in, I think Michael's a long time ago. It was a big bulk pack of colored twine and it's super handy for you know applications like this. I'm just tying it in a little knot and then I'll spread those out and I will end up coming in with my scissors and kind of fraying that burlap to give it a little bit more texture. So I thought I'd do some controlled splatter and bring back in that perfectly perfect patterns. And this time I'm using toffee because I want a lighter color than the espresso. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of this controlled splatter around the layout. If you found this video inspiring, I would love it if you'd give me a thumbs up and that lets YouTube know you are enjoying the content and it also helps me grow. There's a better look at that background stamping. It's subtle, but I think it adds a lot to the layout. And if you guys are looking for more inspiration on how to use those scraps, I have a playlist right here um, giving you some different ideas. You can check that out. And thank you so much for spending time with me today. I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye.